God wants for you. And then those things now will pale in comparison to the joy, the peace, the triumph, the overcoming that may happen. See, you, you think uh, a lot of times your prayer to change someone else really does something for you. But that prayer for that other person with the love of God will change not only your perception, but it'll change their life by what they see now in you. And that's hard to do. Easy to preach. Oh, man, I preach that all day. But it's coming. Amen? Look at Jeremiah 29 and 11. We have got to not think that whatever's going on in my life is that God's trying to do a bad thing. It's the enemy. He don't, God don't even need no help to, to do bad, to let bad things happen. The enemy wants to make sure that the bad situation comes up in your life. And this is what God, this is what we should think of our God. He says this to his people, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. So God knows what you think, and God's a God of peace. And he says, listen, I'm not, I'm not judging you off of the, your actions. I want to change the reason why. The Bible says when you get your intent upon me, you might find yourself repeating some things once in a while. But after a while, that thing, will, it'll sit dormant and the power of God will live above that thing. So when you stand before him, that's when he'll say, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, my faithful, my, my uh, good and faithful servant, job well done. He says, enter now into my, into my rest. That's when we come to him, he's going to say that, well done. My good and faithful servant. I got it right that time. Enter now into my rest. Why? Because you intended to be right here. You're not in heaven. Nobody's going to be in heaven because they want to. Ain't nobody going to be up there saying, he made me come up here. He made me this. He made me. No. I'm not going to make you. I'm going to show you what's true. But now you have to grasp hold to it. You have to have that kind of life. My intention have to, uh, my intentions for God have to override my intent, for, even for my own life. I know that the life of God is in me. I was talking to my cousin one time, and he threw out, he had me laughing. I was laughing so hard I couldn't breathe. And every once in a while, he'll say, say what? You remember that was a good saying back in the day? For those of you who, who were on the earth, <laughs> say what? Say what? No, I'm getting ready to close here, but I, I want you to know this. In Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, and I'm reading through the Message Bible right now, and it says this, and it's, he's talking about how we have been fashioned for our lives, how that, what God has given to us and his intentions for our lives and how we take his intentions and we go towards it. And the only way I can understand his thoughts, I know that he wants to bless me, and he says, this is how I will. This is how you can have that blessed life. It says it, this in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. That means I, don't, I know what God said. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it and, and then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself to your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. This is very powerful for us. And I want you to understand, we are reproductions. What, what the message Bible brought up so fully is so greatly, I mean, it was, it's a great, he says, look, I want to reproduce myself in you. It's sort of like Amway. You ever remember that? I used to have them parties over my house. Oh, what do they call it now? Star? Something star? But they would come over and we trying to get other, everybody to join in with us. Any type of co-op, any kind of uh, 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 business like that. You, you bring people in and you want them to duplicate you. Do what I've done. This is how you do it. Now, you can do all, all, you, all that other stuff that you want to do, but this is the necessary thing that you need to be able to do in order that you may produce what I'm producing. And the more profitable 
you are, the more profitable I will become. They just took a godly principle and applied it to the physical working of business so that whoever's ever at the top gets the most. And God's at the top. He's going to always have the most. But what he does is, is he shares it out, and he gives you responsibilities for it. And if you have his mind, you have his economy. If you have his mind, you have his word. You have, you have his mind, you have his way. Why? Because he will never do anything contrary to what he has said. You can go throughout all of the Bible, or through any man that's ever served him, and you'll always hear God never fail. He never fails. If you have an intention to serve him, even when you don't get what you thought you were supposed to have, uh, you still love him because I wasn't here for the stuff. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. My intentions can be that I have a divided mind. And woman, stay in your place. Woman, you're subordinate to me. You, uh, you're subservient to me. Woman, you're less than me, and I'm great. Or uh, man, don't mess with me. <laughs> you know, we, what we're saying is this. is God called Adam and Eve alongside. He didn't call it behind. He called it the same. Both of them sinned in the garden. And God says, for the man to love his wife and for the wife to honor her husband. Amen? And if any, hey, if... If any one of those things are not working, there's going to be some division and there's going to be some problem. Amen? And that's the intent. Whatever my intent is, it's what I'll do. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has given us, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So now when we have received the mind of Christ, when we have received who he is, when we have walked in his way, when we have known his will, as we have looked for this new life within us, now we have to understand that the, the callings of God, the, the, uh, the placing of God, the intent of God is for us to have his intentions, and then we take his intentions now, and we don't cover it with fear. We don't say in ourselves, I don't know how this is going to work out, God, I don't know. And, you know, I've been in those positions a lot of times in my life, many times. And when I didn't know how things were going to work. You get laid off on the job and you don't know what's going to happen to you next week. You don't know how this is going to work. And all I had intention was not to change anything I was doing. I was still giving the way I was giving. I was still walk, believing him the same way I was believing him. And God never failed in any of that. Why? Because he's the same. He says, I've ne David says, I was young but now I'm old. And I can say that now. That I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging for bread. Why? Because God always gives to you what is, what is, matter of fact, what you don't even deserve. I say it all the time. I have a job that I can go to, that I can do this all day long. I can study all day long. Every once in a while, that we, it will be a time that we have to do an exercise that may be a little bit inconvenient. But besides that, man, I am at church, at work, serving him. Why? Because he gives you those things you didn't even think of. Matter of fact, when I was unemployed, I was unemployed for 30 minutes. I couldn't even get home on my motorcycle till God opened up something. Why? Because my intentions is upon him. I thought I was going to California on vacation. I am going to work. My wife didn't even know my intention probably to right now. <laughs> Amen? Because God says, I'm not through with you yet. I need you to affect some other people's lives. And I need to, to, to polish you. I need to put some in you for my purpose. Amen? <laughs> and what Christ, what God has really done for us is this. Not only he tells us that we have to have this mind, and this is what your intentions are like, and this is how I, I intended you to be. He says this, I'm going to also give you a helper. So that when you don't know, you get that unction. Some say, you know God's name something too, right? Yeah, that's, you gotta, that's the part of that's what his name is, Jehovah Jireh. I provide, he's Jehovah Sitkanu, my banner. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's El El Yon, the most high God. He's the line of the tribe of Judah. And he's something. Something told me to go here. Something said to me to go here. Something, I don't know, something just came over me and I, 
And that's what the Holy Spirit does. We have an unction from the Holy One, and we know all things. Why? Because there is absolutely nothing God won't share with you when you ask Him. When you're reading His Word, if you have intents, intentions to know, He's going to open it up for you. And He's going to take your mind and cause that division of your mind to become His mind. And you have one mind in Christ. And even though that other mind tries to creep up every once in a while, there's a word that just pushes them back up. The Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 15. About a minute left. It says this. Who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God? These things we also speak, not in words which men's wisdom teaches, but in uh, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now understand this. The Holy Spirit only deals with spiritual things. He's, he's, we talk about tongues and songs and spiritual songs and these things, these type of things, but he deals with those types of things. He tells us the things that we did not know. So the Holy Spirit comes into us and he, he begins to open up the scriptures. After the pastor has preached it, I go back now and look in those things and the Holy Spirit opens up some more. And he gives me some more, but he does it. He tailor makes it for your situation. He tailor makes it for what, you under, what your understanding is. He tailor makes it so that you have him and when you intend to know He'll always tell you. When you intend to know, he'll always show you. And that's why you can be sometimes, sometimes going to church, sometimes not. Sometimes moving here, sometimes not. Why? Because my intentions is to have this life that I'm searching for. And why does life have to be so hard? And it's not. When I understand what Christ has done for me and I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things will be added unto me. And he didn't say go search after it. He said you'll just be walking somewhere and I will bless you. Why? Because your intentions, you, I know what you need. I know what you want in your lives. Every last one of you, I know what you want to happen. But if you come to me first, and not say, God, I need you to change. No, no, just praise him for who he is and thank him for who he is. And then stop speaking about the wrongness in another person and speak about the things of God that could be applied to his life so that they will change, that, that the spirit will begin to speak to him or them just the same way you were speaking. God is speaking to you right then. Are being spoken to. My intentions is upon him, then the intent of God's heart will be done in me. And it's a form of an anointing, and that anointing destroys yokes. And whatever that person's not able to, to, uh, able to get away from, now suddenly you'll see change begin to happen. And you'll start, God, I praise you for him. I don't want you to kill him. Why? Because I, I got some wrong in my life too. You may, you might have to kill me. I don't want you to, to, to destroy him because he, we're in a dispensation of grace. He's not going to just destroy someone for you. But what he will do, he will be faithful to give you everything you need for life and godliness first. And then he will take your life and make it an example so that whenever men see you, they'll see that God is moving now. He will move like I don't know about that. I don't know what's up with that person. Whenever they speak, just something happens. That's when you know that my intentions are upon him. And now I get to see what he will do, not only in my life, but in everyone around me. I don't separate my mind from him. I know that there are some things I, I still got to work on. But I can't, I, 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 already, I already proved that I can't change him. I've already proved it. But now, God, in you, I'll see you move. I'll see that change. And I'll walk in your will. Not my will, Father. Let that will be done. You see what's going on. Lord, you know that I know that I'm destined for that tree. But I want it to be in your time, Jesus said. And we can say today, Lord, you know that I'm destined for heaven. But right now, whatever's going on in my life, not my will, not my intentions, not how I think I think I think they are, but by what you've said.